All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Everything Business, right? And as was promised, here is a 2024, actually last year's paper, right? Last year's POB paper. So I just want to provide you with this so that you can use it to prepare for your exam tomorrow, right? And again, I want to give the disclaimer, right, that my responses may not be exactly word for word like what your teacher would have given to you, right, or maybe what you have in your notebook or what you have in your textbook. I like to use simple language. I used to mark for CXC and we do not mark for using big words or anything like that in POB especially, right? So I want to use simple language. So for persons who are very, very, very smart and you don't need the, you know, the simple language, then you are free, feel free to use your complex language if you, you know, if you wish, right? But let's get right into it. All right. So this one says, Joanna recently graduated from university with a degree in management studies and wants to operate her own business. List four management functions that Joanna would be expected to perform in the business. And I list six out of the eight functions of management. So we have planning, organizing, controlling, delegating, directing, staffing, right? Um, I, 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 I could talk about industrial relations and cooperating and all of those things as well. All right, so these are, I'll just give you more than what you need, all right? And you'll find that I'll do that throughout, right? State part B says, state two responsibilities that Joanna's business would have to each of the following stakeholders. And we have employees there. So how is Joanna responsible? Um, Joanna's business is responsible to each of these employees. Well, to pay fair, fair, fair wages. Two, to provide um, tools and equipment, right, for the employees to use. Can't expect them to work when you don't provide them with the tools and the equipment to use. Three, provide a safe and healthy work environment. They only ask for two, I gave three, all right? Also, customers, provide good quality um, goods, right, and services at an affordable price, right? And two, provide a safe and secure shopping environment, right? Then three, be truthful about your products, right? Sometimes businesses tend to exploit employee, I mean, customers by over-exaggerating their product. And, you know, that is misrepresentation. So be truthful about your product. The government pay taxes and other statutory requirements. Two, register the business. Three, comply to government regulations, for example, price controls and stuff like that. So ensure that you pay attention to those. They only ask for two, but I give three just for your benefit, right? I'm not telling you to go and write more than what you need to write. Part C, stay four guidelines other than effective communication that Joanna should follow in order to establish and maintain good management and staff relations. Well, one, she can show appreciation and recognition for her employees, like you can have like employee of the month, right? Two, empower and involve staff in your decision making, like a, a democratic style of leadership, yeah? Three, be fair and impartial, so don't have favoritism, don't treat one employee better than the other employee, right? Four, encourage staff development, so you can encourage your staff to develop themselves, maybe you pay for a class that they do doing, stuff like that. Ensure job security, set professional boundaries. These are all answers that could work. Um, the acts of four, I gave you six. Next, explain two strategies for effective communication that Joanna should utilize in the management of the business. And this is comes under communication as a topic. So one, active listening. Give full attention to the employee, you know, that is speaking. You can paraphrase to ensure that you are understanding. Use clear and concise messages. So be very clear when you are giving instructions. Right. And for three, you can use a backup medium. Right. For example, you can follow up an email with a text message or a phone call, you know, stuff like that, just to ensure that communication is being effective. Question, and that was question one. Question one was very long. Question two, right? Paul and Josh exchanged the following text messages. Paul, need a DJ for my party on the 15th of August. Are you available? We'll pay 6,000. Josh. Yes, I am available and would love to do it. Can you increase the payment to 6500 Paul, glad you're available. 
will get back to you regarding the fee. So there was no further communication between Paul and Josh on the 15th. And on the 15th of August, then Josh turned up at the party ready to perform. Josh was furious when he was when he realized and was informed by Paul um, you know, that another DJ was hired and he threatened to sue Paul for breach of contract. So the question asks you to define the term contract. So a contract is really a legal agreement between two persons or parties whereby something is done or promised to be done, given or promised to be given. And this important sentence, a uh, contract is enforceable by law, right? Part two of question A, identify the characteristic of a simple contract highlighted in the case of work. Well, it does not have to be signed, right? Part three, describe two characteristics of a simple contract other than the one that is cited in the case above. So you can talk about other characteristics of a simple contract. It doesn't have to be in writing. And the contract can be made by word of mouth or even implied by conduct, right? So those are two things that you can use right here. Part B, one of the question, state whether Josh is likely to succeed if he takes Paul to court. Well, no, he would not succeed. Why? Part two of the question is asking a why. Well, he would not succeed because there was no contract. For there to be a contract, there has to be what? An offer, acceptance, and consideration for the contract to be valid. Josh had made a counter offer when he had asked for the 6500 That counter offer was never accepted by Paul. Therefore, there can be no there can be no contract. All right? Part C. List three characteristics of a specialty contract. So a specialty contract must be in writing, must be signed, sealed, and delivered, and it must be of special form. All right? Part D. Explain with the use of suitable examples two ways by which a contract may be terminated. All right? So by agreement. So both parties, and by agreement meaning both parties decided to end the contract, for example, uh, divorce by mutual consent, right? Part two, by performance. And by performance is really when both parties would have completed all the terms of the contract. For example, you went to buy a car from a dealer, you paid the money, the dealer gave you the car. So the contract is terminated. Both of you would have done exactly what you would have been contracted to do, right? There are other ways, like by frustration, right? By breach of contract, those are other two other ways that you can terminate a contract. I did, didn't I didn't put it there, but you can write that though. All right, check out my other videos. Check out my video on contract. All right, question three. Stay two function factors rather of production. You only need two. I gave you all of them: land, labor, capital, and enterprise, or some persons would say entrepreneurial ability. Part B. One of the question. Identify one major natural resource found in Caribbean. I listed four. Bauxite, sugarcane, oil, natural gas, right? Those are four natural resources found in the Caribbean. Then part two of the question asks you to state one industry developed from the natural resource identified in B1 above. Um, so from bauxite, you can get aluminum, the aluminum industry, right? Um, from sugarcane, you can get sugar, you can get rum, you can get ethanol, right? And obviously oil and natural gas stands on its own. All right, part C. The table below describes four different production activities you are supposed to complete the table, right, to show the classification of each activity by type of production and level of production. So they do the first one for you. So the one that we are going to do. So I, Prince Maki, a Caribbean soca artist, he performs across the Caribbean, Europe, and North America. So the type of manufacturing, the type of production, right, is tertiary, and the level of production is what? Surplus. Right, because you go overseas. Part two, Blue Waters Fishing Cooperative located in the parish of St. Teresa supplies fresh fish and other seafood to restaurants and supermarkets, whatever, 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 in the parish, right? In in St. Teresa and adjoining parishes. Type of production, primary, level of production, domestic, because it is locally. Part three, Justin makes school uniform for his children and other relatives. Type of production, manufacturing. Um, level of production subsistence because he's only catering for it for, for close family members and friends. Moving on to part D, the general manager of petroleum, premium chocolate factory. I don't know where I see petroleum. Premium chocolate factory made the following statement to the board of directors. 
Production for the year 2021 was up by 15% over the previous year, but overall productivity declined by 10%. Explain the meaning of the statement above, clearly differentiating between production and productivity. So, well, production is really the creation of goods and services capable of satisfying human needs and wants, while productivity is the amount of work that a person can do in a given time. It is the output per watt, man hour. So then, referring back to this statement, so while they are creating more products, which is production, is going up, right? It is taking them a longer time to do it. And that is why we say productivity decline. A recent survey indicated, part E, a recent survey indicated that there was a significant increase in the productivity of the staff of Sunshine Beach Resort when compared with the previous two years. Explain two likely reasons for the increased productivity of the staff. Well, investment in better equipment and machines. So this would enable employees to do more work in a shorter period of time, thus increasing productivity. And point two, better training methods and procedures. Right? It would improve productivity because the staff would be more efficient. So they are able to do more in less time because they are so skilled. Right? Part four, define each of the following terms. A market, it's really a situation that brings buyers and sellers together. Marketing is really a management process that seeks to find out what customers need and want, um, what customers needs and wants are, and fulfill them while making a profit. Remember, students, that... I would have just brought these definitions out of my head because I think it is simpler for people to understand rather than you trying to remember a definition out of a textbook or your notebook. So this is how I even teach my students, right? I simplify the definitions and I don't, you know, for them to understand. So this is, this is also correct. Part B, list the four elements of the traditional marketing mix, price, place, promotion, product. C, describe each of the following marketing activities. State one example of each activity. Branding. You know, branding is really just giving the product a name, you know, right? And one of the reasons for branding or the advantages of it is that it distinguishes your product from any other product, right? So that is why. Example, Gap, Tesla, Toyota, Honda, and you can list as many other brands as you want. Sales promotion is really undertaking activities that is geared towards increasing sales. For example, buy one, get one free, and you can think about other sales promotional tactics. Part D, COVID-19 pandemic presented part of the business opportunity to manufacture and sell hand sanitizers. So initially, she was extremely optimistic as she thought that the demand for her product would have been great. But after one year in operation, Pat was disappointed that the sales for her hand sanitizers were not as she expected. Now, explain two factors that may have influenced the customer's, the consumer's response to Pat's hand sanitizer. For, for one, the season. What this question is asking you know, is, the factors that influence consumer um, consumer behavior. That is what this person is asking. So for one season, the time of pandemic required people to sanitize more often. So obviously people are going to be buying more hand sanitizers in that season. But after the pandemic, it was no longer a requirement or mandated. So people don't need to buy. So the season is one. Culture, right? I'm sorry. So the culture. So it, it may not be, right, the culture of the people where the, our business is to, to sanitize that often. So, you know, people not going to, you know, get sanitizers like that. Then you have, again, taste, family tradition, price, personal preference. These are all points you could expound on as well, but they only ask for two, but I gave you six. And the last question now, state four ways in which information and communication technology um, ICT has influenced banking, finance operations, banking and finance operations. Well, for one, it is easier to transfer money from one business to the other via wire transfer um, and so on. Two, it is easy to make and collect payments, right? Three, it is easy to view your account balances. And four, it is easy to open or close uh, a bank account. You could also say it is easy to do withdrawals, easy to make deposits, stuff like that. Um, second part of the question, identify two computer software programs designed for use in business. And we know the accounting software is like QuickBooks. We have one named Peachtree. I didn't write that there. Zero is another um, accounting software, 
right? You have a tracking software called Minute Doc, right? That they use in logistics. You have um, one that is called HubSpot, which is a database software that, you know, will store customers' data and stuff like that, all right? Part B, distinguish between e-business and e-commerce. Right now, e-commerce is really buying and selling of goods and services online, while e-business include a wider range of online activities. It's really talking about using digital technologies to enhance business operations. So e-commerce is really a part of e-business. Right. So, yeah, that's the difference. Part C, state four ways in which ICT could improve the operation of um, a business. Well, for one, it can enhance customer service like through online chats or after sales service, it can improve communication with the customers, right? They are able to send an email, do a WhatsApp now, you know, that is what people are doing now, WhatsApp messages, it's easier to communicate. Um, three, enhance data management, right? For example, phone numbers, addresses, they can create a database where they can send out bulk messages to, to customers. And that is why you get like push messages, you know, those text messages that they get in your phone that you don't really want, yeah. Or increased efficiency. So you are able, the business is able to do more for customers in shorter space of time. Part D, the unethical use of ICT poses a significant challenge to businesses. One such issue is that of privacy. Now explain two issues related to privacy that have arisen due to the unethical use of ICT. Well, for one, we know that this is going on right across the board. Businesses can sell customers private details to large advertising firms so that now these firms can take their, their that information and then send targeted ads to customers. That is going on right across the board, all right? And two, serious data breaches resulting in individual or other businesses having access to sensitive customer data, right, resulting in identity theft or monetary losses, all right? And that is the end of the paper. Right. I wish you all the best in your exam tomorrow. Right. Um, just walk good. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and um, take care. All right. Let me know what you think about these in the comment section. All right. And I'll see you in the next one.